pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we got kind of a lengthy agenda compared to normal. Um, so we're going to kind of move things along here. First item, call to the public. Anyone like to speak at this, at this time? Okay, next, Community Development Monthly Reports, Pete Preston. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, zoning and building permits, uh, we have 16 zoning permits, 10 building permits, and... Sorry, I didn't memorize them this time. 41, which is right on our average uh, code enforcement that, that we do monthly. Uh, otherwise, uh, we're, we will be having the uh, special meeting for wind energy uh, March 27th, and that'll be at the Ovid LC High School in their art auditorium and cafeteria. Uh, it can hold a number of people, and we'll have uh, good acoustics in there and uh, work with their audio audiovisual people uh, to actually have a microphone so public comment can be made. Okay, we, we have that down at under 10, but while you're up here talking about it, can you explain the the plan to have this this meeting on the 27th, then the planning commission meeting, and then there will be a, another meeting in April? There, there, it'll be at the discretion of the planning commission to call for a public hearing sometime in April in order to get this board uh, the language uh, that the planning commission intends. It's my intent to walk through uh, staff's final recommendations, given what we've received from the township, given what we've received from the public, given what we've put out there previous, and given what we've received from the wind turbine companies. And then is there public comment discussion during this? During this, during this, uh, this is uh, essentially, it's not a public hearing on the 27th, so the planning commission will have its deliberation, but before and after that deliberation will be public comment. During that meeting? Right. The, the way the agenda will be set up is there'll be public comment and then staff will present to the Planning Commission its recommendations uh, uh, for the language. The Planning Commission then can go through and line item, change, whatever they like, and then at that point uh, open it up for public comment again and, and schedule a public hearing. Okay, and then, and then what happens if you have a group of people, do you have 10 people, and they want to yield all the all ten? given the number uh, that they should be given 15, 20 minutes. Uh, I will speak with Mr. Nolan beforehand. Okay. Uh, I would also ask that, that if there is a group that is asking one person to speak to let us know ahead of time. Um, what we do not want to get into is where people in the room are shouting out, you can have my five minutes. So uh, we also want to keep down uh, responses that are repetitive or comments that are repetitive and that will be at the Planning Commission Chair's discretion. Any questions? Just, you know, I think it would be helpful if you made it very clear to people at the beginning, if you're not already planning to do this, to let them know that this is not a public hearing. Yep. Yeah, so that it, and, and maybe explain the difference, because my, my concern would be that they don't understand the difference between this scheduled meeting and a public hearing. So if it's a, more like a public work group meeting? It, it's just, it's an item on the agenda as the Planning Commission will work on any language amendment. We have it on the agenda, um, but it's not a public hearing, a legal public hearing, where comment is accepted on a particular thing. But they will be given the opportunity before and after that to make comment. We will do that. Uh, we will. We do plan an announcement on the difference. We'll also outline a work with the Planning Commission Chair on how we'd like to, to see things go, because there will be, again, opportunity to continue to comment on this. No, sir? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Um, thank you. Thank you. Next, Mr. Hathaway, um, presentation of the National Water Trail Coalition. Ten minutes, fifteen minutes? Less. Okay. Up to you. <laughs> I have four points to make on right. this subject matter sent here by the Parks Commission. <laughs> that is the uh, coalition that's organized to manage a uh, national water trail from Holly to Chesapeake. That's uh, a body that has to have a coalition. The National Park Service, when it qualifies a river system for a national trail, there's only two in Michigan. It's only 25 nationwide. Uh, 
This trail is already on the Department of Interior Director's desk in Washington, D.C. Uh, to get that nomination, a, an organization had to be established. A loosely tied one was sufficient. We've created this coalition concept. And we're looking for the most representative government bodies all on the trail to have a voluntary association with this coalition. So no dues, no fees, uh, but it is very important to have the organization and the input because if there is one qualifying character to this National Water Trail, it's the county park system. Talking from Holly to Oakley, there's nothing, or Chesney, there's nothing equivalent to what these county parks did to qualify this system for a trail status. Uh, the four points are that we need to formalize a relationship, the first star for this coalition. They have a memorandum of understanding that everybody signs just so there's some sort of formality to it. Then there are goals dealing with marketing of this trail, uh, public education, all those things that, non, uh, that and this is not even a nonprofit that this coalition will do. Uh, the third thing is that we need a representative from the county. Parks Commission uh, would be great. Uh, I've asked that I could be an alternate. I don't have any official role anymore. I was hired as the consultant to write the plan and the application to the National Park Service, but uh, I'm out in the cold here and I'm willing to keep working. I'm working in Vernon right now on building a new canoe launch. And I've done seven of them already, and I've still got a few left on my agenda, including working on Johnstone Road a little bit, County Park. And the fifth and final, fourth and final thing is that they do take votes once in a while, uh, just, and I have yet to attend a meeting where they took a vote. It's always been consensus-based. So the characteristics of the organization, there are 18 signed on already, most of them are local governments. Genesee County opted for something that you might want to do. They, they, they uh, came in as a member through their Parks and Recreation Commission, not the County Board of Commissioners, which is perfectly sufficient for the purposes of the coalition. So I would kind of uh, ask that you, and Jeff, if you think the Parks Commission wouldn't mind the uh, title, uh, create in that memorandum understanding the uh, authority for them to become a coalition member through your resolution. To also make the appointments to the, uh, the, the delegate and the alternate to the commission. So that's my request. Uh, it certainly fits economic and physical development in terms of the county's future. It'll bring a lot of people to this territory looking for a place to recreate and do all the other things that they do on their day trips. So that's my proposal and if you have any questions, I Yeah, so the other night at the Parks and Rec meeting it was three of us, so we're all there. So we have a, a, lot, a little more in-depth presentation, but this is a this is potentially quite the uh, could be the eco tourism boom for us, um, in Shiawassee County, um, kayakers, canoers, um, starting down in Holly and then going all the way to Chesapeake. Uh, like I said, there's only two in Michigan so far, 25 in the country, and this will be the longest one in 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 the state, correct? The other ones are short little. Ones. Uh, the Huron's longer. St. Clair's uh, Huron goes quite a ways from okay. Davis St. Clair one's the short one? The St. Clair's the short one. High quality though, Every, all seven launches are very free. I mean, they really went first class over there. But, so, uh, so based on, based on, um, based on our discussion the other night, and what Phil has presented here, I guess if somebody could make a motion to, one, um, give the authority for the, for the Park Center to be part of the coalition, Phil has, has volunteered to be an alternate, and Jeremy suggested that I be the board member, and I'm okay with that. So if somebody wanted to make that motion, then we'll go from there. Or if somebody wants to make a different motion. As I stated again, I'd be willing okay. to make the motion. Okay, okay. the motion has to be one, we have to be kind of basically give our Parks and Rec uh, board authority to be part of this coalition. Two, appoint Mr. Hathaway to be the alternate, and per, Jeremy's recommendation that I made for me to be the uh, the delegate on the coalition. Mr. Oh, sorry. Does it matter that the uh, signature of the chair should be appointed, should be made made in the resolution as well for signing that memorandum? Uh, probably wouldn't be complete if, uh, if it was done by the chair of the Parks Commission, but uh, Jeff, you would be a perfect signator yeah. of the authorization so motion. I would like to sign that, and we just want to make sure that Mike you caught that mic where we need you to make the uh, resolution change Okay. Okay. We, we, we get with him. Yeah, I will. The two of <coughs> together and make yeah. sure he gets the information that he needs so that he can draft that up for us. Yep. And then I will sign it to the Parks Board.
board, and I would second uh, Commissioner Brough's motion. Okay, so is there any discussion then on, on the motion that we made and the resolution that we're going to have to have drafted? <coughs> questions? So, okay, well, wait, I have a question. Yes. So is it is it strictly just our park? I want because I want Chiawassee County to be a member of this coalition. Your call. Is it strictly just our parks commission? Well, or? that implies the whole county system, but uh, that that was an option I gave you. You can be the board of commissioners as a member and have your parks commissioners be the delegates and whatnot. Uh, that's just as fine. It's even a better, uh, in my view, a better representation of coalition support to keep it at this level. Uh, but I just gave you the model of Genesee County that seems to be <coughs> But Parks and Recreation does represent Shadows County. Our Parks and Recreation represents both mm -hmm. Shadows County. Yeah, yeah, but if the letter comes from the Board of Commissioners or the Parks Commission, it sounds a little bit better if it comes from the Board of Commissioners right. than the Parks Commission. I, I got to say, I agree. Good catch. Sure was right. Because yeah. 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 we did discuss that, and I'm, I don't know, it just won't slip away. I think the Board of Commissioners should be. Um, the main one on this and the, and the parks are actually the that would be that would be my uh, good job. So can we amend the, that motion then or do we need to resend the first motion and make a new motion? Does that mean that does that mean I'm not the it then since I'm not on the question there? No. No, so, no because we're making the board commissioners go okay. okay. so And we just all fill yeah. the yeah. fill the yeah. alter. Okay. So, okay, so to clarify. Yes. <laughs> Could you read it back to us, please, man? Well, I, I've listened to the conversation, and I just have that the uh, Parks and Recreation to become a member of the Shiawassee River, River Water Coalition, mm -hmm. Dan McMaster, Commissioner McMaster to be the mm -hmm. delegate on it, and then Mr. Hathaway. Okay. <coughs> The and then so we'll we can just amend it to the board of commissioners the instead board. of the parks and recreation. Exactly, Commissioner Brown. Will you say that again? We we'll just we we'll just amend it to say that the board of commissioners is not a member. Parks and recreation is delegate. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll draft the resolution, and, and then we'll also have a resolution that will committee the uh, we'll committee the whole, and then if there's a change that needs to be made, they can make amendments to the. Mm -hmm. draft. So then one day we'll be voting on two things. Mm -hmm. The resolution and this motion. This motion okay. concerns the resolution, doesn't it? Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Number six. Consider approving the Shiawassee County Survey or Peer Review Group to be appointed. Peer Review Group members <coughs> Ron Caldwell, retired David Kenny. At Craft Engineering Surveying, Mark Powell at Powell Land Surveying, John Quinney, uh, retired John Rouser at Road Professional Services Company, and Mark Van Raymondock at Landmark Surveying. So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? Yeah, can we have somebody explain it? Wasn't that much information in our packet about this? I believe this is something that's. It happens periodically. Um, this is the same group of gentlemen that we've been appointing every every year. Nobody new has applied to try to fill <coughs> any of these positions. So and these gentlemen are all willing to continue. Yes. We just keep pushing it forward. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes. Number seven. To serve approving the Shiawassee County 2018. Remonumentation contracts. I make that motion. Second. Okay. Support. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item number eight. Consider acceptance of the 2017 Draining Office Annual Report. And I believe we have somebody here. To speak about that. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much very similar to all the reports we've given. Our drainage systems have been down in the past little bit because we've been planning for the Mistigay to be assessed, but that still hasn't happened yet. And last year we were planning on both the, or the Looking Glass River and the Maple possibly being assessed, and that didn't happen either. Because mm -hmm. all these inter-county boards don't give us the full say on it. So we will be assessing at least the Looking Glass River this year, and who knows on Mistigay. 
there's any questions or anything specific. Well, any questions for her? Or we have made a motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Who does the motion? I'll make that motion. Motion? So support? Okay. Discussion? Questions okay. for her? I, could you give just real brief updates on the Mr. Gay and the Looking Glass? Um, Tony would be a better person to give on the Mr. Gay and the Looking Glass <coughs> today, because um, I don't go to those meetings, thank goodness. <laughs> but the Looking Glass River, um, we just had a meeting on that Friday. We have got a draft application of costs started, and we will be planning and assessing that over two years um, with the four county, four counties all paying a share on it. Um, and we're still keeping that under maintenance and not under a petition, which significantly keeps the cost down. And the contractor will be, be over on the last parts of the 2017 contract once the water goes down a little bit. Which I know you're very interested in that. No, uh, I happen to be very involved in keeping track of this. And so and I have one other question, and probably you may or may not be able to answer it, and I can get it from Tony. Is there any provisions in this contract as far as brush control? Not that I know of. Mainly, we were spending the money to get the log jams out of the river and just putting it to the side. I, we weren't even um, burning the. I mean, just the brush that's growing up already. Yeah, I've seen some brush. So that's probably something I need to no, not discuss here. I haven't, we haven't talked about that at any of the meetings, but I know. As of right now, that's not part of the contract, and that's going to go through back through and do. But we're kind of trying to stay right at the maintenance limit, getting all of the um, log jams out as much as we can. Because this last rain that we had significantly um, caused a lot of water everywhere, including way downstream, um, lots of parts of Clinton County flooded from that are, that are in the floodplain, mind you, but they've been higher than they have in the past. You know, that was brought up by a gentleman, was it this meeting or was it one of the township meetings where he was concerned about the brush growth, the overgrowth in the, in the drainage ditches, and uh, it was backing up on his property. So, yeah. I don't believe there's been discussed a whole bunch, but I've, I've been monitoring it, and I've already noticed some areas that are starting to have heavy brush growth already, and um, I, I would think it would be, if we, there's any way to, for the drain office to handle it, I think we need to do it now as opposed to later because it'll be a lot bigger and more expensive problem later. So we do have another scheduled looking glass meeting in April. Um, I can have Tony talk to the board to see if they want something earlier or at least, you know, um, or please think about that as an option. You know, I, I will say the parts where you have gone through and the looking glass pulled out the logs. Um, when we had this recent flood, it, it, it flooded, but it went down relatively quick. Mm -hmm. Further down the river in Clinton County, you have water that's, you have some, um, and it's the floodplain, but since like 40 years ago when it flooded, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, when the, when the looking glass was going down and the Shiawassee was going down, and the rivers here were going down, over in Clinton County, the looking, and the Red Cedar was going down, the looking glass continued to go up because there's still, when you get over into western Shiawassee and then into eastern Clinton County, you still have a ton of debris and logs and everything. There's a water level monitor in Eagle, which is out of the, uh, which is way beyond what the established point of beginning of the looking glass is. But you can see that the it, um, water level went up for the initial rainfall, went back down, but then it went back up again. Probably because of how fast our water and the water in other areas. Because we got a lot of these logs in the I think so. Not which, all of them. Which it shows so that when you clean there. it out, it's going to move, and, which is good. The problem is downstream. But yeah. he's going to be forced to do something. What's that? He said Clinton County yeah. will be forced to do something. When you have a, I can't, I can't remember if it's a five year or a six year plan. I can't remember if it's including last year or, or going forward on the looking glass to actually get all of it cleaned out eventually. Um, the, all of the established portion cleaned right. out by the end of that time frame and then planning going back possibly and doing other small things here and there. It's a I mean, it's a down river it's an inch. There are fields that were flooded when I was little, haven't flooded. Houses have been built and they've flooded there the last couple of weeks. And the river when you get into Clinton County and Tony's talked about this, the problem you run into is <coughs> the, the river no longer serves as a river, it's more of a floodplain and it actually gets a half mile, three quarters mile wide, it's almost turned into lakes. 
and which is I mean, it's supposed to do that somewhat to absorb the water, but it's a uh, it's jammed up. But and you clearly see here the water's moving a lot quicker. We have flown with a helicopter um, the Hooking River twice, and they've like lost the path a few times in that area where right. it spreads out. You don't know where the river really is. Exactly, yeah. and when we actually do assess this, we actually we will have um, a bullet carrying on it, and we actually have a informational video. Or PowerPoint presentation, I think. I can't remember which. It's, it's, it's um, uh, they have somebody talking through it, so I can't remember if it's a video or if it's just a PowerPoint presentation on it, though, that we're going to be posting on all, all the county websites to <coughs> go over and show kind of what the plan is to work on it. Excellent. Any any more questions for the drain office? Okay, all in favor of accepting the 2017 annual report, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes, report approved. Item number nine, just their approval, I'll move forward to changes to the Wasso Speedway. Uh, Pete, are you still here? Yes. Can you start support. and? Support. Sorry, I'm sorry. <coughs> Motion support, let's do a discussion, try and move things along here. We can start with Pete, and then did you fill out a public comment sheet? Or do you want to speak during it? Or? Um, I would to answer any questions. Okay. So we'll start with Pete first. <laughs> no, Mr. Chair, um, our office has been approached over a number of years uh, concerning the uh, uh, consent judgment that governs the Obama <coughs> Speedway. Uh, that was entered into uh, in the early 2000s as a nuisance complaint uh, from uh, the county. Um, Mr. Biggis purchased the property and you can name the date, um, but our office has been in conversation with him about potentially changing the zoning of the property or somehow getting out uh, uh, from underneath the consent judgment because of the strict uh, criteria there. Um, we could not find a, a mechanism through uh, zoning at the time. The Vaso Speedway has been a, a non-conforming use for uh, a number of years and has uh, had racing there and other events uh, during that period. Um, uh, Mr. Biggis contacted us via letter uh, concerning uh, what could be done on that property and then from there uh, it was discussed uh, with various persons about possibly amending the consent judgment. And so what the new consent judgment uh, would uh, essentially have is a relaxing of some of the criteria that were considered overly burdensome to a legal non-conforming use, um, primarily because conditions have changed. Mr. Biggis has not had uh, any violations with their office and I continue to work with their office on that. Uh, and the mere fact that time has changed and the county no longer has a nuisance uh, issue uh, with the property. I'm sorry. Answer any other questions? So in, 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 summary. in summary, this is going to how many how many nights how many how many races race nights can you have practice nights? What what we what we've discussed and, and provided to you is essentially uh, that there would be uh, two race events a week, and that could include two races or a practice and racing. Wednesday, which has always been a practice night and uh, uh, Saturday uh, was always a race night. This would allow Friday and Saturday to be used as race nights, both nights. Um, and Friday could be a practice and race could be a Saturday. Um, but if they do hold a practice event on Wednesday, they could only race uh, either Friday or Saturday uh, forthcoming. Um, we did away also with the three-day event. Uh, that used to be uh, quite the, uh, from Friday till Sunday, uh, racing and camping. Uh, that's been eliminated because of allowing the Friday and Saturday night races to take place. Um, we also looked at uh, uh, the times. Uh, there were some uh, provisions in the previous consent <coughs> judgment that just didn't make sense for a racetrack that had functioned previously to continue to do so. Uh, that involved not allowing more than one vehicle on the track to practice at a time. Um, that would be done away with as well. Uh, camping would be allowed on any race night uh, during, the, except for Wednesdays. And then, and any any new additional events like a demolition derby or monster trucks or any of that stuff, so we'll be allowed. We'll be allowed all the inside the track. Correct? All racing events would be allowed within the historic perimeter of the track. What you see out there is the inner track of what used to exist. Uh, Mr. Biggis has uh, provided us some photographic evidence to show that there was a. 
uh, uh, outer track, which did allow a variety of events uh, uh, that involved racing, including time-type racing. Okay. Do you have any anything you want to add? Any concerns, or if I want to move this further along? Actually, for, first of all, I, I would I would like to thank everybody who's who's paid attention and, and, and given me an opportunity to speak over the last several months. Um, and now, just really, you know, as times have changed, um, economic for economic reasons, the auto racing as a whole is is not healthy and. The facility has to be able to do some more things, or I will not be able to keep it open, and nor will I be able to keep it open. But with the consent judgment being as rigid as it is, there's nobody else interested in it. So, um, uh, you know, the, the, the new consent judgment that has been proposed is uh, is, is, is ideally, um, I, I think, would, could really allow the facility to. Uh, to be beneficial to the, to the community. Uh, I've had several phone calls from people that have supported it. You know, why can't we have something like this in our township or in our county and so on and so forth. Um, so um, throughout the discussions over the last couple of months, I, I feel that it's, it's a very fair compensation with, with the new uh, consent judgment I've looked at that, that Mr. Preston has sent to me. So I'm very satisfied with it. Um, I think the main thing I want to make sure everybody's clear is that um, right now I'm allowed to, to basically use the facility twice a week. And that's not going to change. It's still still twice a week. It just gives me a little bit more alternatives because the, the Wednesday practice is virtually senseless. You know, at the beginning of the season, we may get a half a dozen, a dozen cars to show up. As we get into mid-season, nobody's practicing anymore. So we're really down to running that facility one day a week for about five months, and it's 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 just absolutely not enough to you know pay commercial taxes and so on. So uh, no, I'm I'm, I'm excited uh, about the, the future and potential uh, things that we can bring into the community. I know the local businesses. I have all the support of the local businesses. So uh, no, I don't. Unless anybody has any questions, I don't really have any other comments or uh, directions. I, I'm personally, I'm very pleased with everything that's going on since I've uh, approached you folks back in October. Well, we thank you for bringing it to us instead of just trying it out on your own and then working that way like some people do. So thank you for for, for coming to us. A absolutely. <coughs> um, just a couple of things, yeah. I guess, because I have worked on this. So Mr. Riggs said, you know, and if this does go through, he plans on, you know, putting money into his facility and making it a little bit nicer. And I'd also ask for Pete to come back up here again and explain what the consent judgment is. I, I, I'm not sure if everybody understands how that works. It's, this is not going to be a decision that we make. It's going to be going, I'll go ahead Pete, would you please explain that? Uh, originally there was a nuisance complaint on the property uh, and the county entered into a consent agreement with the previous owner. Uh, instead of taking it through the full prosecution, it was agreed upon certain conditions for the track to operate. Uh, this would be recognition between the Board of Commissioners uh, and Mr. Biggis or Big House uh, Incorporated uh, that conditions have changed uh, to warrant change to uh, the consent judgment. This would be an agreement between the Board of Commissioners and the current property owner that still would have to work its way through uh, the judicial system and a judge would have to uh, sign off on that. Okay, any, any more discussion? I'll oh, just thanks for your patience. Yeah, yeah thank, you. Thank, you. thank you for thank you for coming to us, laying it all out, instead of just trying to do something on your own and you know, fight it. I would appreciate it. Well, you know, I, I want the support of the county. I want it to be a, a, a something that uh, it's not all about me. It's something that, that it's going to be good for everybody. And I, I certainly want to support you guys. I, yeah, so thank you. Oh, I appreciate it too. I'm, I'm a race fan, so uh, I'm, I'm glad things got worked out, or at least get sure. to that point. And the facility, you know, it's old. It's been there for 80 some years. It, it needs new bathrooms. It needs some things, and without any more opportunity to generate any revenue, it's just not there. So, um, no, absolutely. The first thing is, is I, I, you know, if everything um, works its way through the system, I'm going to put new bathrooms in this year. The facility definitely needs new bathrooms, and. Uh, 
it, it, it needs some up, upgrading. There's no question about it. I have to spend some money there for sure. The asphalt needs attention. And so. I just want to add there's been very few complaints, if any. And every time we're out to uh, this facility, very cooperative, waves us right through. We drive through the pits and things like that. So always uh, very courteous with the law enforcement. Okay, so we had a motion, we had support, we've had discussion and with that. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, the next item we've already talked a little bit about, item number 10. Pete touched on that. Um, just to kind of go over it again. March 27th, over at High School. There will be public comments allowed, but the, the purpose is for the staff to present to the Planning Commission what's been drafted so far. Revisions have been handed in um, from the townships and from the municipalities around the, um, around the county that, that don't have their own zoning, that rely on the county zoning. Number 11, other agenda items? Does anyone have anything? Next item will be the last call to the public. Has anyone turned in a slip? Okay, not seeing any. No, item 13, meeting is adjourned.
think if we ask for a nice to have it, as I see, she finally got the uh, picture up on the wall. And how so the county didn't make that work? She said she got the picture. She said she got the picture. She said she got My name is Olga Quick, and I am employee of the Shiawassee County Circuit Court Family Division. As you know, a wage study was completed in 2017 and accepted by resolution in 2018 by the Board of Commissioners. What you may not know is that the Probate Court Circuit Court Family Division Employee Association is not being afforded the same benefits or opportunities as the other represented classified employees that during contract negotiations on Wednesday, March 7th, the Probate Court Circuit Court Employee Association was denied the request to adopt the recommendations made by Municipal Consulting Services Exhibit 17. Despite affording two other groups the six-step recommendation, one group which includes a commissioner's relative, we were advised that a mistake was made despite documentation to the contrary. At this time, we are scheduled for mediation. Mediation is not being scheduled until late April due to a scheduled audit. I understand that the hope is the association will cave and accept the offer made. If not, some employees will lose a scheduled step increase due to the work anniversary date. I would ask you that you do what's fair, what's right, what's just for your employees, what was recommended, accepted, and budgeted by the board. Thank you. Anyone else at this time? All right, we will move to agenda item four. I'll entertain a motion to consider authorizing Shiawassee County Front of the Court to hire a support case worker to a salary grade of four with a salary of $33,010 to $40,373 to fill a vacancy with the starting range being $33,010 to $35,963. So moved. Second. Motion to support. Any discussion on this? Anything? Just refill a vacancy. Just a, yes, that's all. all. <laughs> and and how, how far along are you in this? We process? have actually um, we have been able to schedule interviews, and we did hold interviews. Um, I just extended an offer um, preliminarily on the board's passing of this um, position, and the person did accept. Mm -hmm. So um, I did have a brief discussion with Commissioner Barks about another side issue, but he can, I think, talk to you folks. Um, there's just a little sensitive issue that um, I'd like tomorrow to be able to call the people that didn't get the position and let them know that we've accepted or that we're, we've offered the position to somebody else. The rest of this we brought in front of the board on Wednesday. 
Yes. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, agenda item five, consider authorizing the treasurer's department to hire deputy Tre county treasurer two, salary rate four, 33,010 to 40,373, fill a vacancy, <coughs> starting rate of 33,10 to 34,486. Mm -hmm. Second. Motion to second, any discussion mm -hmm. on this? How long has this vacancy been vacant? Totally recent, Tom's still here. No. <coughs> Last um, work day for the employee was uh, the 5th of March. Oh, okay. Any advertisement out or just no. got that closed and I think I received in about 17, 18 applications. Okay. Is there anything else going on there, Tom? Well, it's one day at a time. One day at a time. Busy, busy cycle. The end of uh, February was the last day to pay uh, 2016 taxes without a penalty going on. And that last week, we, well, I know the last day of that uh, cycle, we had over 190 receipts that we processed in that day. And now we're coming up to the end of March, which is the deadline. Actually, because March 31st falls on a weekend, they have until April 2nd to pay the 2015 taxes or goes into foreclosure. Yeah. Yeah. Last uh, few days of March, well, we're closed on Friday, which is a good, fr good Friday. So that Wednesday, Thursday, and then following Monday will be a very, very busy day in the second year. <coughs> I hear the Meltnick property is taken care of. I haven't seen anything more. Is that the, that's that the, the rain, the burning drain. No. Yes. So we should be out of that now. I haven't, I haven't received any. No All right, thanks, Thank Tom. You. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item six, consider authorizing the Department of Veterans Affairs to hire an administrative assistant at the AFSCME salary grade three, 30,722 to 37,565. Fill a vacancy starting at 30,722. Mm -hmm. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion on this? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, say. Motion passes. Seven, consider authorizing the prosecuting attorney to hire a part-time salary pros assistant prosecuting attorney at salary, salary grade 10, $23.02 per hour to $29.03 per hour for 24 hours per week to fill a vacancy starting at no higher than $23.02 to $27.34. So moved. Second. So motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion moves on. Agenda item eight. Consider off, uh, approving the 35th Judicial Circuit Court Association's contract renewal. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I will state for the record they are on six steps, not nine. Five. Oh, five, six, five. yes. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Which passes. Agenda item nine, consider approving the contract between Shiawassee County and Shiawassee County Humane Society, Inc. for services for sheltering of animals taken into custody by the Shiawassee County Animal Control. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Sheriff? This is the current contract uh, that we're operating under. This is just a renewal of the contract. They were willing to extend that until the end of the year, but we anticipate a dollar a day increase uh, after the end of this year. It includes all, it includes City of Owasso and stuff also, doesn't it? Yes. This is not, says by Shawas County Animal Control, but it's actually all dogs in the county. Yeah, yeah we do the enforcement for them. All right, sounds good. Any other questions? Any for the sheriff? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Passes. And item 10, consider the acceptance of the 2018 medical marijuana operations and oversight budget in the amount of $27,667 and authorize the Sheriff's Office to purchase the 2018 Ford Interceptor Utility All-Wheel Drive and Medium Brown from Signature Ford in the amount of $29,942 to replace the current K-9 vehicle and satisfy the grant requirements and authorize Sheriff Ryan to go or his designee to sign all documents. Mm -hmm. Second. That was quite a motion. 
Yes. <laughs> so this is a grant we applied for. Um, the grant is available for the enforcement of the Medical Marijuana Act. Um, we wrote the, the grant for, for $10. Uh, we may get $10. The maximum amount of money that was available for the grant was $27,667. So it, it only made sense that we wrote the grant for the maximum amount. Uh, they did approve the grant, and so that is the amount that we're asking uh, for. And then we were able to justify this by uh, doing it as a canine vehicle. So, so, so you're, you're going, you're just replacing the old canine vehicle and getting a new one? That's correct. And, and then, and I'm assuming since the deals with marijuana, canine unit is used occasionally in the enforcement of drug stuff. That's correct. Good. Nice. Good. 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 Yeah. What do you do with the old one? We're going to sell one, and then the other one we're going to keep as a transport vehicle. Keep the miles down on the new ones. All right. Sure. Of course. Two things um, that the sheriff didn't mention. I don't know if it's in the packets, because I didn't look at the packets. <coughs> I've been through all this stuff. Um, so the grants were 27,666. The truck is 29,942. He is asking the board of commissioners to make up the difference. And we will have to buy the entire truck. And correct me if I'm wrong, Sheriff. And then we have to wait how many months before? They reimbursed us on the last grant. It was September. I could take the money out of my capital outlay if it poses a problem, but if you're willing to front it, uh, we get reimbursed uh, in September. I'm going to use the drug forfeiture money that we have now in order to equip the vehicle with new lights, cages, and everything like that. So, 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 so the shortage, the shortage of two thousand three hundred dollars. How much will we be? How much will we get by selling the old one? Average about five thousand dollars. He wants that for up to equip the new one. That money to equip the new one. Okay. So he is asking the board of commissioners to pay the difference, and then I don't, you know, so that's up to the board. As far as us waiting until September to get our money, I'm sure we can figure out a way to do that as long as it's all set up. And you know what I mean? It's, the money's coming until, until the grant shows up. So just want to make that aware for discussion of the board and um, as part of the vote. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. I personally don't mind spending uh, over two thousand dollars to keep our fleet up to date, and make sure our deputies have the, the nicest vehicles that they you know, they spend hours and hours a day, a couple thousand dollars, and uh, put the dog in. And that's fine with me. That's their office. That is their office. Yep. Anything else? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion moves on Wednesday. Number eleven. Consider approving the chair. Of the Sheriff of Shiloh's County Sheriff's Office to purchase a 2018 Ford Interceptor Utility all-wheel drive and medium brown signature for the amount of $29,942 and authorize the Sheriff to sign all documents. So moved. Support. So this is a uh, vehicle that was uh, we budgeted for. Uh, we're not asking uh, any additional monies. We're going to, uh, from the sale of the vehicle we talked about, use that money to equip this other vehicle with cages, lights, and things of that nature. And it will uh, replace uh, one of the older vehicles that has uh, about 130,000 miles on it, and then we'll sell that vehicle. So is it, are these the Explorers? Is that what these are? The new ones are Explorers. Okay. Anything else for the Sheriff? Any other questions from the board? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? On. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Number 12, consider approving the use of up to 25000 from the waste fund 230-230-700-000 to authorize to utilize the household hazardous waste program allowing the health department to conduct two hazardous waste collections in calendar year 2018 and authorize Larry Johnson, health director, to sign all necessary documents. So moved. Motion and support. Any discussion on this? All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion moves on to Wednesday. 13. Consider approving the use of up to 15000 from the Waste Management Fund by the Shiawas Conservation District to cover the cost of two electronic recycling events to take place in the spring and fall 2018. Authorized board chair to sign all necessary documents. So moved. Support. Motion and support. 
Yes, I have some additional information, gentlemen. Um, so first of all, as you may or may not know, these are things that we do every year. This was this money that we're using is in its own line item. Um, it's the special funds that come from waste management. We get um, $75,000 a year from waste management. Um, I asked Patty to look up things for me. So going into, um, at, or excuse me, as of January 31st, 2017, there is $91,658.67 in that account. Um, so, and there's one other item to come up that I'm going to have some discussion on also, but, um, so these two together are, are about $40,000. So there's, there still means a balance in that fund, um, for things that are coming up. I, um, I also contacted Rick Crawford, who is the chairman of the Solid Waste Committee, and they are, they do have a couple meetings a year, and these things, these, these, this, what we do with these funds are always discussed at their meetings. And all three of these things that, that you gentlemen are going to consider today have been approved by the Solid Waste Committee Fund. Is there, did Rick say, is there anything else they'd like us to know? This, this came up a year ago here. Yeah. And this came up last week at the Parks and Rec. Is there anything else that they So at this point, um, he asked, the question was asked is how much money's in there, and I didn't know until today. So I'm going to call, we'll get through this today, um, and then I'm going to contact Mr. Crawford again and um, explain it, you know, let him know what's going on and stuff. And, uh, and, you know, we did take at one time, you know, we give some money to the city of Lanesburg, we give some money to the Morris Transfer Station. Um, so there are some other green things that this money can be used for if somebody, if some of these organizations step up and ask for it. But there again, it needs to be approved first by the Solid Waste Committee and then by the Board of Commissioners. Do we ever do anything with the river cleanup? Uh, that money, Larry gets a special grant for it. It's a state, a state grant money. And he's yeah. applied for it. He's, and he gets it every year and he's applied for it and got it and he's mm -hmm. never asked for no funds, any of these funds to support that program. Anything else? Just add, I did talk to Mr. Crawford as well and he Said the same thing. Solid Waste Committee was in support of all of these items on here. And anything to do with our, our parks and anything with, uh, you know, as long as it meshes well with waste management, you know, some people are waste management too. And waste management is in big support of these recyclings too. So, anything else? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those passes. Number 14. Uh, Say we're going to consider approving this. I'll take a motion to consider approving up to five thousand dollars to build a permanent bathroom at Get Grove Park. So moved. Second. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Chairman Words. I'm on the Parks Committee, so I'll, so um, Ralph and I'm excuse me, I don't know his last name from the Ambus came to the Parks and Recreation meeting. Last Wednesday that we had uh, Commissioner Rook and Commissioner McMasters were there. Um, the AMBETS have been taking care of the Get Road Park for many years. They do a fabulous job. Um, they cannot find anybody to put a porta potty out there this year because of vandalism. And they, every year they get vandalized, vandalized, vandalized. Um, so he came to us and we discussed it, and the proposal came up that we would put a cement septic tank in, um, build a black building over top of it with a steel roof and a steel door that locks, and uh, to have a bathroom out there. They would continue to pay for the pumpings when needed. Um, so we're hoping that this $5,000 would pay for that. And then we would have a permanent building out there that's somewhat indestructible. And uh, I'm about to take care of it. And I'll just be a good addition to that. Part. And I would like to add to that. The reason that Ralph was there talking about it was because they handle the maintenance of that park. They do the mowing and the garbage pickup and everything. So um, one of the things that our grounds grounds and maintenance departments do. Anything else? All those in favor? 
those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. We move to agenda item 15. Any other agenda items? Does anyone else have anything to come before finance to decide? Yes. I noticed that the EFSME contract wasn't on here to be approved. Yes, I noticed that as well. We'll add it on Wednesday. Okay. But we haven't gotten anything back yet from them. So, we're still waiting to hear. Uh, any other agenda items? Nothing. Call to the public, anything, nothing. We're adjourned. <laughs>